We tried to avoid using chemicals and it was only moderately successful. Partly again, it was an inherited problem. The previous owner used to feed his cows out here and they just bared the ground off and left it really high in nutrients. So we came in and of course we had, we had to access the yards and we had to access the shed. And just from our vehicle action, we wore away whatever ground cover there was. So then the bindi population just exploded. So we tried using some vinegar sprays and, and management to try and you know smother them, but we were losing. So we ended up spot spraying with a poison, which we were loath to do, but the bindis were winning by a long way. So, <laughs> but what we did then was we brought down three or four round bales, about three, I think actually, uh, of mulch hay and we rolled them out and then loosened them up further just with by hand or with a pitchfork. We threw in a bunch of warm season grasses um, but we did add a little bit of lime. We added worm juice, a tiny bit of gypsum, and and we kept the livestock off it. And we let it we let it seed up. And we let the carbon um, soak up the overload of nutrient, which was contributing to the bindis because they love a good feed. And um, we've kept the livestock. Um, from sleeping there. We've, we've put the cattle through once or twice to ha harvest off some of the growth and take away a little bit of that nutrient overload, but we're not leaving them there to sleep and to add more nutrients. So um, yeah, we've got plants growing there now. The bindis are not making a return. They're still the odd one, but they're not um, getting to spread out and, and express their full size and their full seeding they're restricted because there's shade uh, and there's competition there that they're not loving and it's working a lot better we can drive the truck in and out now it's a one pass thing and the area is responding really well much much better than we expected or, or you know we didn't really know quite what it would do but it's worked really really well How did you know about the nitrogen thing? Was that just because you put two and two together or did you have an idea with bindies like nitrogen? Um, well, bindies are one of those weeds that are opportunistic. If, if mo many weeds will respond to excess nutrients. Um, and because we knew the old fellow that owned the place would feed his cows out here and then they would rest here all afternoon in the shade of the big gum trees. Uh, cows are lazy, they don't get out of bed to poop. So there was just heaps of, of those dried up cow pies and uh, this place had been known by the same man for 40 years. So you had 40 years of the same kind of <laughs> behaviour. Um, so yeah, it was a bit of a obvious mystery. Go for it. Okay, so that, that will be um, a pitted bluegrass that gives you next to nothing in the way of um, body of feed. It's seed head and then you've got this tiny little um, crown down here and that's, that's it. It doesn't get much better than this. This one over here will be um, a forest grass. It's it's a bit better and it will grow a bit of a body of feed, but they're not uh, they're not huge volumes. So you're really working hard to get enough biomass to push down on the ground to get that biology happening. So we're trying to fast track that a little bit here by providing um, some hay, and we're going to move that to a couple of locations, spreading out the leftovers concentrating the manure and if we see a bit of a break coming in the season we'll add some sorghum seed or something like that something nice and sturdy that can get uh, a nice fibrous root down and start to open up this hard hard little corner we've got up here and we're, we're still dealing with prior owners management as well um, his cattle were never fenced we think they like to sleep up here and really bed this little ridge off so it's very hard to get a body of feed up here and hard to get anything as far as um, decent ground cover. So we're, um, 
using the the cattle in a different manner that's what we're working on up here at the moment so when you say up here how big is this area um, that you're struggling with this is probably two acres all up it's not a huge area but on a small property every acre counts yeah. so I like to know that I've got feed from from fence line to fence line and I know I've got quite a gap here um, and we've had not a bad winter we've actually had rainfall this winter which is kind of uncommon <laughs> yep that'll be a cow pie we're still finding cow pies from the previous owner as I said You'll see there's another one over here. So these, these, these little weapons. Um, we're, still, we're still breaking these up from the previous owner. So this is an indication there's no dung beetles? No, we actually have great dung beetles now. Oh, you do? But we think the previous owner was, because he wasn't, um, he had no understanding of, of control grazing or... Um, moving livestock away from their own manures that they were feeding over the same areas really regularly so then his worming regime would have been really constant and regular as well because we've been finding these since we moved in Wow. Um, and they just don't break down <laughs> so that's that's some of the wormicides that that people um, are, are being recommended to use and they don't they don't have a great impact on the manure and we Southeast Queensland's a bit slow for dung beetle action in the cooler months, but as soon as the weather warms up, they're away again. So we are, our local land care actually has just started doing some dung beetle research. So we're looking forward to seeing if we can improve the, have I got treats? No, I haven't got anything for you today, have I? <laughs> You'll just have to eat hay. We're hoping that they can um, increase our cool season um, population and that'll help um, remediate any any dung that is left behind in the cooler seasons but it's a very uh it's very common and it's an indicator species but people kind of think that it's um it's like a pinnacle grass a lot of times very old school thought was that you had spear grass, you'd throw a match into it, it would sprout away really green and you'd fatten your bullocks on it. Spear grass country, black spear grass country was always quite highly prized. But it's only a successional grass. It's We're seeing it start to fade out and the rose grass and uh, secker stylos and things like that are starting to move into there because we're managing the grazing on it. We rest it, gets a really long rest, but then it gets a really intense trampling and that comes right down the gully. So we're seeing that whole gully grass up now, whereas before we had these big bare areas of, of, of rock poking through or, or at least really coarse, gravelly, scalded looking areas. But they're gradually grassing over because that mulch is being pushed onto them. It's letting the moisture sit there long enough to get something else to germinate. So gradually, that's that whole bank is improving as well and we're not having to try and drive a machine over it there's a little bit of thigh action i admit going up and down that slope but even there we're getting smarter and we're coming across the hill now so we'll we'll graze the first uh third and we'll come down we'll graze the third that comes into the the gully and then we'll graze the third coming up this way sort of thing so you know we're getting smarter about it as well but it's 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 improved dramatically it used to grow next to nothing mm. and now we're seeing a thick mulch layer lay down um and now that we have that contour above there uh that will that will uh allow that water that normally would have raced off of that slope to to, to penetrate and come through at a much much slower rate and and keep um green grass or growing grass there for a much longer period in the year um, and all we did was change the management we haven't actually put any machinery up there at all so it's a it's a really interesting slope that one so I look forward to seeing what happens in the next wet season and what sort of grasses we see um, come through then Of 
course, you don't want it washing away down into the, the, the road stormwater drain or anything like that. So we don't, don't encourage it, but you can see that line where it stops and, and it drops away in the grass quality again. Yeah, that's phenomenal. But just a really, really good example. Mm. Like staring you in the face. Yep. Well, what are these trees? Oh, uh, we've got bamboo here. But we get really strong westerly winds across here. So we're planting a, a hedge of bamboo across here that will um, get going. This season we have... Some of them are grassing up inside the contours and some of them are taking a little bit longer. But usually that's if there's not a great... Um, pasture above them is what we're finding like this is still pitted blue and um, sporobolus grass on the upside of this one so there's not a lot of seed that comes off of those some of the other places where we've got the kangaroo grass or some roads they're grassing up in the contour nicely but a couple of them are taking a little bit longer but overall we're really happy with how that's gone this one's a really interesting one because that little dam there um, Purely by way of the way the contour got made, there's a little plug of grass there that filters the water coming out of the dam. And then, of course, this is on level contour, so it very slowly comes through here, through the pipe. And that little pond, which is only tiny now, will overflow for weeks. Wow. And have moisture coming through here, probably three weeks, depending on, on the weather. Um, in a decent season and I think it'll go for a lot lot longer yeah that's great so yeah it is and especially once I get on and get my tree planting underway again um, this will make for a lovely cooling humid belt coming across here um, which will make for a much you know more pleasant environment that's part of why we've, we've put the contours in is to hold that moisture which increases your humidity which is admittedly in January, nobody wants more humidity, <laughs> but, but from a grass growing point of view, it's fabulous. Yeah. So.